Before we get maybe into the specifics of the boards, can you like tell us a little bit about like how did you get into STEM in the first place? And yeah, yeah what was what was your path like there? Who encouraged you and mm. and gave you tools to play with along the way? <laughs> oh yeah. So I always had a like a really strong love for science and I yeah, I had science as my number one career choice for a fair while. So I like had an epic science camp that I went to in high school and an awesome chemistry teacher who like, you know, you'd bring in a Barbie doll and she'd put it in like the different types of acids. <laughs> it's part of the yeah. acids and bases unit. Loved all of that stuff. And yeah, so I started doing a Bachelor of Science at uni. And while I was doing that, all the medical stuff around 3D printing started to come out. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is, this is the stuff. This is what I want to be into. Yeah. And so at the time it was like 2012 and it was prime Prusa Mendel era. And so of course I went and bought myself a little Prusa Mendel kit online and I put it together and I started having a go at a bit of 3D printing in my room at college staying on the university campus. Awesome. Uh, yeah, so I had like, yeah, first time I fired it up, I had like a crowd of other students in there with me and we're all just sitting there like, yeah. like, oh my God. Like, Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was peak hype at the time. And honestly, it still is a little bit for me. Like I'll catch myself watching the machine being like. It is okay. kind <laughs> of like very zen and fascinating. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> It is, definitely. <laughs> yeah, so with that, I was able to go and approach a like a professor at another university who was working on biofabrication. Mm. And I was able to show him some parts that I'd made on a machine that I'd built. And he was like, you're on the team. Nice. So, <laughs> yeah, I got to work on medical 3D printing for a bit, which was pretty wild. But yeah, it's all sort of transitioned me into hacker spaces and maker spaces, which is, yeah. Like, I feel like I've sort of, like, 3D printing has been, like, my original sort of, like, excitement, but, like, being able to go off and do, you know, electronics and art and all kinds of other things has been, yeah, a really fantastic maker journey. Cool. Well, before we get into electronics, so I'm, I'm interested in what kind of medical parts you got to print or design mm, or both. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually pretty like, funny. So I was... Like, what um, weird stuff. <laughs> I was actually making breast implants. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And there it was. Well, that's, uh, that is something that I did not expect would be 3D printed. <laughs> so, Which, yeah, okay. Was, was I can it, explain. Was, uh, that create hard points, like, and not... <laughs> hmm. And that really was just the tip of the nipple of the project. But... Uh, <laughs> Anyway, uh, so the idea was that, so if someone has breast cancer, they, yeah. you know, may need to go in for a mastectomy or a lumpectomy to have that cancer removed. And at that point, they are sort of faced with a bit of a decision as to whether they, you know, just go completely without natural breasts, at which point they can be, you know, having some kind of, you know, self-identity issues, mm -hmm. which is not good. Or they can go and get, you know, silicon or saline implants put in, which honestly, even worse, to be honest, like, like the, the research, you know, around the terrible things that can happen with those and how painful they can be and how they need to be removed every 10 years is. Yeah. yeah that was one terrible. thing I didn't know until a friend went through that, unfortunately, mm. but, you know, talking to her about it, I was like, wait, what they have breast implants have to be replaced. They don't just stay in there. I was mm. completely unaware of that. So, yeah. 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 Yeah, gosh. And so we were sort of working on an alternative where you could 3D print out a biodegradable scaffold and mm. over two years it would biodegrade into like just fat tissue in the body. And so you'd end up with something that was a bit more of a lifetime salute that still looked like a breast. That's super interesting. And would, would there be anything else behind the scaffold, like a saline or anything like no, that or just just the scaffold yeah it would just dissolve away oh. and you'd have like yeah seeded fat and connective tissue in there okay but yeah it still remained to be seen whether the project actually would work in practice we were doing like animal trials and yeah it was a it was a pretty wild project to be honest i i feel like I'm not sure if i would want to test out that project at all <laughs> <laughs> but uh it was a great trial run to actually test out and use a whole range of different 3D printers that we had in the lab, which was, yeah, what I was all about. So cool. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. Awesome. So, okay. So then how did you get into circuit boards and electronics? Mm, yeah. So that is a good question. I think 
like seeing circuit boards and electronics has always been a little bit of magic to me. Like it's always, yeah. always been like that next thing that like if you can crack out, you can figure out how to add cute blinking lights to everything. You know, so yeah, I was pretty keen to try and yeah, challenge myself and figure it out. And so my first electronic stuff was like with Arduino mm -hmm. and yeah, managed to, to get in and like have a crack at some Arduino by doing like a quite expensive workshop, which I sort of wish that I had someone who was able to sit down and teach me. And even during the workshop, you know, I sort of came across some, you know, casual sexism type stuff and one of the ladies in the course was like, oh, you know, can someone help me? My, my female brain can't understand this. And Aww. yeah, I feel like I've sort of come across that like a little, a few steps along the way, but now I'm able to actually teach Arduino workshops and sort of bridge across a lot of the barriers that I faced when I was trying to learn, which feels really good to, yeah, get the community on and make sure that people do know how to, how to do this in an affordable, you know, and free way through the uni. Yeah, definitely. So, so was that then, was that then still while you were at uni then that like, and taking classes and things like that, that, that you did, that you did that workshop and started into that, I guess, what was your, what was like the majority of your coursework in out of curiosity and like, what did you end up with a degree in and things like that? Yeah. Yeah. So I ended up with a bachelor of biomedical science and okay. I did my honors year in vaccine development. Oh, wow. uh, which I, yeah, I didn't enjoy as much, uh, <laughs> and then went on to that PhD project and I ended up only lasting about a year there. And while I was doing all that, I got super involved in the Brisbane hackerspace, uh, which is like the biggest hackerspace in Australia. Nice. And so, yeah, I used to go out there pretty regularly on, on the open nights and go and hang out there. And soon enough, I ended up becoming president out there for two years. Yeah. And just managing the space out there and seeing all the, the fantastic projects people were working on was just constant inspiration for what was possible like yeah really adored the show and tell times where people would be like yeah i built this weird contraption check it out <laughs> yeah. yeah so yeah that was definitely the inspiration it was around then that i started getting really excited about you know what's possible with electronics and yeah cool Cool. So electronics wasn't uh, like, wasn't specific coursework that you pursued in uni, no. but yeah, it was sort of around yeah, that I did time a, and after. Yeah.